The world against America, coming down hard on U.S. trade policy, demanding a bigger share of the American market, our American dollars. We hear all about U.S. jobs going abroad, cheap foreign labor, and a skyrocketing trade deficit. We all know what happened to the U.S. steel industry. Some of us like to buy American and call it patriotism. My next guest says that is racist. I'm joined by Stephen Landsberg. An associate professor of economics at the University of Rochester, professor of today's big question. So why is buying American racist? I haven't said it's racist. I've said that it's ugly and it's ugly in the same way that racism is ugly. Uh, if you take the rhetoric of politicians like well, John Edwards, back up. John... The, the headline says, Why Protectionism is a Lot Like Racism. This is in the Florida A Lot Megan. Like Racism. Yes, a lot like racism. Well, okay. That's you, not you exactly can, the same You as can being nuance racism. it, but I get your drift. Why is it a lot like racism? Well, in order, the easiest way to see that it's a lot like racism is to take the rhetoric of politicians who have pushed this issue, look at what they're saying about how we have to encourage companies to hire more Americans, we have to save American jobs, we have to buy American, replace the word American with white throughout that, and you will not be able to tell any difference between that yeah, rhetoric but, but and the rhetoric that we have from David right Duke. Of a, from of, a, of, a, of a factory in Detroit, it's not white. They're black, they're Hispanic, they're white, uh, they're, they come from white. Absolutely. Well, and we are being asked to care more about those people because they happen to have been born in Detroit yeah. than other people because they happen to have been born in Juarez well, or Tokyo what, or wherever. That's what nationalism that's is. That's not a whole lot different from being asked to care more about people because they're white than because they're black. Well, I, no, but, I don't I, I mean, see... but Professor, I mean, you don't have to get elected to anything. Can you imagine a politician going out to the American public and saying, you don't have a right to a job? That guy in Thailand has a right to your job, uh, the same as you have a right to it here. And in fact, we, we have an obligation to let him have that job, not you. And if, and if we didn't, we'd be racist. There was a time in the South, in the United States, when a politician could not have gone out and said, in many places in the South, when a politician could not have gone out and said, blacks have the same right to work as whites do. But I don't. The fact that that would have been difficult for a politician, I think, should not have prevented us from standing up for what's right. But, all right, Professor, look at this. Here's here's uh, one of the things you said. Both major parties are infested with protectionists who would discriminate on the basis of national origin, no less virulently than David Duke, the noted Klansman, or any other overt racist would discriminate on the basis of skin color. Now, it seems to me you're being inflammatory to the extreme. I, it's hard to imagine uh, any American saying, well, I, I mean, obviously they go into Walmart every week and buy something cheap that they got from China, and they're obviously not married to the idea of buying American. But once you say to them, well, you shouldn't buy American, you should buy some from somebody else because you owe it to them. I think they're going to say they lose you there, Professor. And again, every argument that you make, I think you find if you go through the uh, exercise of replacing American with white and foreigner with black, you're going to be shocked at how much you sound like a lot of politicians. Well, that's fine, that you would but not that's not what we're with. saying. I'm not saying. Well, look at this one. I hold this truth. To Where's be the self difference? Well, I tell you, there's a big difference. I hold this truth to be self-evident. It is just plain ugly to care more about total strangers in Detroit than total strangers in Juarez. Well, I hope you don't have to go to Detroit anytime soon. But you know, do you agree? I, do you agree that it's just plain ugly to no, care I don't about people strangers ugly at all. who are of white more I than total more strangers who are black? In Detroit, than I do for people who are Do you care? Do you care more about people who are white than about people who are black? No. But, uh, What's the difference? Prof well, Professor, the difference? They're, they're my fellow Americans. I care about people who are as they're nice Mexicans, but my fellow Americans in one, come first. In one case, they're people who share your nationality. In the other case, they're people who share your race. Why is one a legitimate difference to well, discriminate the other Well, because it's not race. Not? It's, and, 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 and Professor, what, it's what's a bad about example. Race? What's, There's a lot of black people in Detroit, race? and I'm all for those black people in Detroit. What is special about race that makes it bad to discriminate on the basis of race, but not bad to discriminate on the basis of nationality? What's the difference? Stealing assets is wrong, you write. And so is stealing answer. the right to earn a living. I don't think it deserves an answer. And so is stealing the right to earn a living no matter where the victim was born. Professor, I think what you're doing here is establishing a, a justification for moving jobs offshore 
uh, in some sort of fear that, that the American public may rise up and demand they come back. And it, it, it's almost like the horse is out of the barn, the jobs are already gone. Why even bother making this argument? Well, you know, two, two issues are being conflated here. There is first the issue of whether we can, in fact, make ourselves more prosperous through, through protectionism. And the other is whether protectionism would be ugly even if it could make us more prosperous. The answer to both questions is that, is that protectionism can't make us more prosperous. Those jobs that are going abroad are allowing us to buy goods a lot cheaper. Uh, and uh, it is true that's disrupting the lives of some Americans, but on balance it's making Americans wealthier. Uh, I think the easiest way to see that is imagine if all these people abroad, instead of working cheap, worked for free. What if they, what if they were sending us free cars, free clothes? Uh, it's very difficult to argue that that would make us better off. If they're sending us cheap cars and cheap clothes, that's not quite as good as sending us free ones, but it's still pretty good. Uh, so uh, that, that's one set of arguments. The arguments that you're talking about here is a completely separate set of arguments, but I, I, I think the earlier point deserves to be made too. And that is that even if it were the case that letting these people uh, have jobs and letting these people trade were bad for us, it's not, but even if it were bad for us, it would still not be right to deprive people of, of their basic human rights to choose their trading partners. Steven Landsberg, Associate Professor of Economics at the University of Rochester. Professor Landsberg, I guess I'm going to get some email. We may have you back. We may have more questions answered. Thank you very much.